afternoon. I'm Nicole, moderating and conversing during series two of Net Elixir's three-part series, Amazon Insights and Strategies. Last web series, we discussed why your business should enter Amazon's marketplace. Today, we will delve into the cornerstones to compete. The importance of this is, is to initiate discussion on how SMEs can navigate their business in Amazon's marketplace in an optimal way. How an agency like NetElixir can help lend their expertise. For instance, how to use the Hofstede model when building your business tactics. We will take a break mid-session of this 30-minute session to have a chat and open for some questions. I'd like to introduce Udian Bose, founder and CEO of NetElixir. Thank you very much for the introduction, Nicole. Uh, hello, everyone. Thanks for sort of joining in. Uh, our second in the series of our webinar. I really wanted to sort of go ahead and just do a start with a quick introduction of the company. NetElixir, we help e-commerce brand find and engage high-value customers and acquire game-changing insights. Uh, in terms of our solutions, we work with a we work with a fair fair range of companies, but and I am really excited to announce two of our uh, new partnerships uh, in the Swedish market. Uh, the one with uh, Redeal, uh, uh, which happened a couple of weeks back. And we recently have a new partner in Visma, uh, uh, arguably the most prominent uh, technology services and technology solutions company uh, in the Nordics. Uh, we are extremely excited about that. Uh, in the US, we are one of the top 10 independent agency partners for Google. Uh, we are also a customer technology program partner for UPS as well. So it, it's really be a uh, really, really a privilege to really partner with some amazing companies. And that's what we wanted to showcase. We, uh, we work with a wide range of clients uh, in various industries from food to fashion. And uh, Lenovo, we, uh, uh, we have been working with them for about 11 years now. We manage their global search marketing program. Uh, Cole Palmer, Cross Fence, I'm pretty sure many of these names will be very familiar to you. Uh, we provide a wide range of solutions, uh, which we call the e-commerce growth solution, uh, starting from digital marketing strategy to paid search and shopping, social media marketing, Amazon marketing services, uh, search engine optimization, analytics consulting, and e-commerce development or web development as well. So moving on, the topic uh, or the theme that we had chosen for this second in this series of the Amazon webinars was building an e-commerce growth marketing plan. Now, I'll just try to share the or start the presentation with the with one slide which we had shared last time or last week, uh, where we had tried to very clearly emphasize why you need to be a part of Amazon Marketplace, and Amazon really needs to really be a part of your brand's omnichannel strategic plan, and how you exactly make Amazon a part of the plan is the key. So today we'll be talking about as to how exactly you can make Amazon a part of your plan. And I'll just try to start with a model that we have been using. Uh, it's called, uh, it's called the, the ghost model, uh, where the, the G and O start for goals and objectives. So uh, the, the S stands for strategic initiatives, and T starts for tactics. Now, this is going to be probably a little more academic and theoretical in nature, but this is something that we have been implementing over about 15, 16 years now with tremendous success. So we are trying to... Uh, uh, trying to request you to look at your entire e-commerce program holistically, rather than breaking down into different parts. So the first question would be, what exactly are your goals? What, what exactly are your goals in terms of e-commerce revenue growth numbers? Uh, for example, maybe uh, 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 you may say that I, I really want to uh, drive an incremental million dollars. Uh, then the next question is, uh, what is the what is the prime, secondary goal? Why the primary goal is driving a million dollars in terms of new revenue, what is the secondary goal? Secondary goal is normally almost like the con controlling factor. So you may say that I really want to do a return on investment for every marketing dollar that I spend of about five is to one. So that becomes your secondary goal. With that, the next part comes in is more on the strategy part. And I will delve a lot on the strategic initiatives over the next few slides because uh, in our experience working with many, many e-commerce and D2C companies over the last about 15 years, we have seen that I think uh, 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 a lot of companies get really confused between strategic initiatives and tactics. So I really wanted to emphasize that a little bit. So goals we have already discussed, it's, uh, it's basically time-bound, uh, specific, measurable, and there has to be a primary objective, for example, revenue and the secondary objective. Now, in terms of strategic initiative, which we believe is the heart of the plan, 
uh, first of all, it has to be understood that the strategic initiative is an action. Uh, there should be a verb in the phrase, just being very theoretical about it. These are big, broad moves that will help businesses achieve the goals and objectives. So there has to be a clear connection with the goal. If you want to achieve these, these are the big strategic moves that we'll be doing. Three simple questions that we have really found a tremendous amount of value in while we are thinking about or the businesses are thinking about strategic initiatives. The first question is pretty broad. Do you want to grow market share or do you really want to grow the category? So let us say you are in a category that is in a beverage category, right? So do you really want to grow the category as such, like let us say like Coca-Cola, or do you really want to grow your share within that category? And uh, again, that can be defined very specifically in terms of product sales equals category sales times product market share as well. The second is penetration or buying rate. So what exactly are you hoping to achieve? I mean, uh, in terms of sales uh, penetration, are you really hoping to uh, sell to a lot more people or you are expecting the people to buy a lot more frequently? And the last part uh, is what is more important for your business? Is it awareness, trial and repeat? Now, some of you may have been be thinking as to what does it really have to do with uh, really uh, competing with Amazon? Now, one of the things that we really have emphasized and will continue to emphasize throughout is uh, you should get your strategic initiatives right first. And in fact, as an example, I'll give you some strategic initiatives which you may really want to adopt for your e-commerce business. It can be building brand awareness, building buying rate, building penetration, increasing the loyalty or repeat purchases, introducing a new brand, expanding into a new market, attracting competitors, customers, defending against a new competitive product, increasing referrals and reposition the brand. Uh, the reason we feel that it is extremely important and we really sort of truly believe in sort of getting the strategic initiative right, because think of the initiatives as something which is directional, which will sort of lead you into a certain path. And once you have the path, then the part is the rest is tactics. What are those, what are those different channel mix or uh, what are the different options that you would really tweak in your core piece of marketing plan so as to be able to achieve the strategic initiative. So the strategic initiatives also are important for another reason because they form the, the heart of the plan which connects the, the, the goals with the end tactics specifically. So that's, I think, one of the things which I really wanted to share with all of you. And there has to be obviously a set of tactics to support these strategic initiatives. So our entire thesis is Amazon may feature in one of your more tactical sets. It should not be a strategic initiative. I know it's a pretty bold statement. Uh, in many cases we have seen, and uh, having, having now worked in the US, uh, the US market, which is one of the most competitive in the world for about 17 years and literally sort of competing with Amazon throughout that time, we have seen time and again when there have been companies or e-commerce businesses which have really made Amazon a strategic initiative, uh, slowly how, the, how the, the, the balance of power really has shifted. So Amazon should be more of a tactics rather than a strategic initiative in entirely your overall game plan and the strategic market plan. So that's a very important statement that I am making out here. Any, any questions that you may have, I'd be more than happy to answer it within the presentation or uh, at the end of the presentation as well. So with that, uh, I will just quickly move on to just one topic before we really move on to our Q&A. Uh, today's is a very short to the point webinar. So this is something which, uh, which we have found time and again to be a, an extremely important component as to how to select what to sell on your website and what to sell on Amazon. So the first thesis in this one is really looking at your entire e-commerce spectrum or where exactly you will get the online sales from in one holistic bucket. And that's where I think that ghost model that I presented to you helps you to do that. Then answering the simple question, how much would you be wanting to sell or what would you want to sell on your website versus what would you really want to sell from, more, uh, from different marketplaces which are there. And the reason it becomes important because your product choice can really define your success and also your path forward as well. I'll give you two examples. The first example that I would want to give you is that of Zappos. I'm pretty sure uh, most of you, if not all of you, would have heard of Zappos. Right? Zappos is still the leading sort of a footwear retailer in the US. And in, in around 2009, Amazon acquired Zappos or bought Zappos for a billion dollars. It was the biggest acquisition until very recently, in fact. And the reason they did that was 
Zappos really was able to differentiate and build a brand which was obsessive about customer satisfaction. Obsessive about customer satisfaction. They were able to build the brand. They were able to build a culture. And uh, that was too big of a differentiator to really ignore for Amazon. So even though Amazon acquired Zappos, they have allowed them to really operate independently, which normally doesn't really happen very frequently when you really sort of get acquired by Amazon. The second example which I wanted, so I think the point that I'm trying to emphasize with the Zappos example is the importance of building your brand around some purpose or some meaning. So the brand purpose is a very key component as we just sort of decide as to how we really sort of move about building a brand, which would differentiate you and give your brand that very different level of legitimacy and also, uh, uh, as we call it, tremendous amount of followership from your business, uh, from your customers as well. The second example which I wanted to share is unfortunately not, not one of those very pleasant examples of what can happen if you really uh, uh, if you really don't build a brand in terms of focusing on customers, which stands for the very strong brand purpose. The example that I have is a company called Quincy. I am not sure how many of you would recognize the name Quincy, but I'm pretty sure that many of you would have sort of heard this company called uh, diapers.com. Now, diapers.com uh, was formed in 2005 by two gentlemen, right a few miles from where I'm speaking to all of you from in New Jersey. Uh, uh, and the diapers.com story was essentially they they really wanted to be a preeminent uh, uh, category med uh, overall retailer in the US. And they were able to really build a tremendous, tremendous business. Now, that is where, I mean, Amazon can be one of the most difficult competitors to deal with. So Amazon and diapers.com got into a bit of a competition, a fight, and uh, Amazon really got into very aggressive moves, very aggressive moves in terms of pricing, etc., which was difficult for diapers.com to match because the margins in that business can be pretty low. As a result of which, diapers.com ended up selling, selling up to Amazon, uh, essentially, I believe in 2000, 2010, if I'm not wrong, the, the, the acquisition was completed. But what happened was unlike unlike the situation of Zappos, where it was running as an independent business, primarily because they had been able to build a brand around the entire customer obsession, as well as the strong brand purpose, diapers.com uh, essentially was directly folded into the Amazon system. And in 2017, diapers.com essentially, uh, Amazon decided to uh, sell off or abandon the diapers.com uh, properties or assets as well. So the reason I'm just talking about both of these things is both of these things are good example of how strong of a competitor Amazon is. And one of the ways while you are competing on strategy and the strategic plan, that plan can be very helpful. At the same time, it's important for you to also constantly focus on what does your brand stand for? What is the brand purpose? So I'll just try to touch very quickly before we move on to the Q&A section with Nicole, how to select what to sell on your website and what to sell on Amazon. But I wanted to check, Nicole, if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer them now, or we can we can talk later as well. Yes, absolutely. Um, uh, as you were talking about Zappos, I'm really interested to hear um, in regards to customer service and their, you know, their outstanding customer service that Zappo had that Amazon had required. Let's say um, a your the customer is essentially Amazon's customer, not your customer. But uh, if a business who is set on Amazon wants to have interaction with these consumers and customers, is it possible? How can a business connect with those purchasing their products? Is there is there an outlet to do that? Absolutely. So Zappos, uh, uh, though Nikon has been running pretty in independently, so Amazon has really let them run pretty independently on this. There are certain operational parts which Amazon does. So I think that Zappos sort of runs as an independent business. Uh, in the case of diapers.com, the situation was a little different. Diapers.com was running essentially sort of folded into the Amazon system. So it basically, they didn't really have too much of an identity left very, very quickly after the acquisition happened. So when you are selling on Amazon, it, it's true. Uh, and specifically, that would be applicable for all of the businesses which would be selling or essentially on Amazon Marketplace, that the, the customers are essentially Amazon's customers. So how, how can you really compete in that situation? So uh, the first part, as I mentioned, 
I mean, really using Amazon as a tactic in the entire strategic plan that I shared with all of you a couple of slides back to in the in the overall post model that I sort of presented, where the moment you sort of let Amazon move from tactics to strategy, uh, uh, rest assured that Amazon will become a tremendously dominant part, uh, dominant part uh, in terms of your overall uh, overall business planning, et cetera, et cetera. And which is exactly what uh, you may not really want to essentially give the, give the key, key to your store uh, directly to them. So there has to be a fine balance maintained in terms of uh, just that. And by using the strategic plan, you can really decide that. The second part, again, as this Apple's example shows, uh, I think brands which stand for something uh, brands which really have a very clear brand purpose. And when I say stand for something, it basically is enmeshed in how you operate as a brand. I mean, what really makes you who you are, right? So those are the parts which becomes very important, the brand purpose component. And that's where I think uh, even, even a huge giant like Amazon uh, essentially has let Zappos pretty much run independently. It's just a proof of the testimony to the very strong brand which Zappos has really built in. So I hope that answers the question. Um, yeah. let, a I, strong branding is what you're saying, then. It is, a, a is important. Purpose, I think is a very important part. Yeah, and in interaction with the, the consumer, how, how do you use that as a tactic? Or how, how can one uh, make that a tactic? Uh, yes, yeah, so I think I would probably, some of that may sort of get answered in the next section, just a couple of slides, Nicole. And I'll probably Great. get okay. to your question again, probably after that. But uh, that's, I think, one of the parts which I wanted to share in the second part as well, but that's a great segue into this thing. So this is the question that I would try to answer. Uh, this grid is something that we have used quite oh. time and again. It's a pretty sorry, Odion. We have two two questions in our question box uh, from the audience here. Oh sure. Uh, Absolutely. First question is: If we are able to build our company's business sustainably on Amazon and get an offer to sell at a good valuation from Amazon, uh, what's wrong with that? They have access to the bigger markets. Amazon might be a good strategy too. Uh, it absolutely is. But at the end of it, it sort of really all boils down to. Uh, what is the core business purpose that you have? Uh, if you're, and there are a lot of companies which are there where their end game is getting acquired by Amazon, right? So that, that and there is, there is nothing wrong with that. But then there are certain businesses which are fiercely independent. And they believe that, uh, I think in the, in the overall scheme of things, uh, it sort of works better for everyone if it becomes much more of an open market where there are equal amount of competitive pressures and so on and so forth. So from that perspective, I think there is a there is a case to that, and I'm not really denying that uh, there is anything wrong uh, in terms of building the company around Amazon. But the point that I'm trying to sort of raise out here is there is an alternate way as well, and the alternate way, as I gave the example, I mean, may also lead you to getting acquired by Amazon or sort of running independently. Yes, I'm pretty sure many of you would have heard of this store called Etsy in the US. They are doing exceptionally well. They are really build a brand which has a very strong social conscience. So there is nothing wrong with that and there are pros and cons. And eventually I think it fundamentally boils down to what, what is that, what you want for the business and what is your priority in the long run? Uh, any other questions, Nicole, Great. or should I? Uh, my other question, uh, yes, there's one more question from the audience. What are the aspects to consider before making the decision to start selling on the Amazon marketplace? As it is quite common for dozens of retailers to sell the same product, thus crowdedness generates fierce price competition. How will the e-tailers in Sweden become winners on Amazon? Could you tell that's us about any hidden challenges, if there are any, for selling on Amazon Marketplace? That's a, that's, that's, that's a great question, I think. Uh, so, I, I mean, my, my answer probably first is sort of selecting and deciding as to what you really want in terms of the brand. Uh, again, that strategic model that I outlined can be of tremendous help. So Amazon should be a tactic. I, I would probably can't emphasize this uh, uh, any, any stronger. Amazon should not be a strategy. So that's, I think, the first part. So it is one of the different, different channels that you are using to promote your product. That, that way, you are not really overtly dependent on Amazon, uh, which I can tell you, I mean, once you really start selling, because Amazon has tremendous, tremendous overall 
uh, uh, brand value and sort of attracts a tremendous amount of opportunities as well and new customers, uh, it's very difficult. So you'll sort of soon see that there would be a skew which Amazon, uh, uh, in terms of the overall business, you are able to uh, generate out of Amazon. But that's where I think putting Amazon in the tactic definitely helps the first part. The second part is deciding as to what should you even sell on Amazon and what you should not sell. So this ROI matrix, which I had, hopefully can really, uh, uh, really help primarily because you have to really classify or categorize all the products that you are selling on your website currently in terms of just margin and velocity, right? So how much margin will I make if I sell one unit of this? And what is the velocity? How many units am I likely to sell in a month? And based on that, it's again classically an adaptation from the BCG matrix, as some of you may have already guessed. And in certain cases, you have stars, you have, let us say, cash cows and so on. And there should be a strategy for each one of them very separately as well. So that can be really helpful because what products are most profitable for your business? The question is, would you really want to even sell that on Amazon? Now, there are again two schools of thought there as well. It, one school of thought says that, no, we should not be selling on Amazon, primarily because they are very profitable. Why should I give, essentially, uh, the, the keys to my overall uh, product portfolio, the most successful product portfolio to Amazon? Uh, didn't you just share with me the story of diapers.com and we all know as to what happened? On the other school says that, essentially, why don't we sell this on Amazon? Primarily because we have more margins on this one. And as a result of which, we probably... You, because we'll have to really sort of pay a certain fee or a commission to Amazon for every sale, but doesn't matter. I mean, I, I think since there is not much of a competition at Amazon, why don't they go ahead and sell that? So that that probably is a way to answer this. There are different factors to be considered, and then the strength of your brand as well. There are some for some companies which essentially have gone in and then pulled back. An example comes to my mind is Nike, which sort of got in and then sort of pulled back as well. But so hopefully that will really sort of answers the question that you have asked. I'll, I'll just sort of go through my next couple of slides in terms of the product part, and then we'll get into the Q&A. Uh, I, I see a lot of questions coming in and keep them coming. This is the sort of love, love the questions. Uh, so this is part the part I was talking about in terms of profit margin and velocity. Uh, the only addition that I would sort of put, put in this one is mapping the overall comparative intensity also for each one of these grids as well. That's an important component because then based on this, you really have to decide for your business, what do you want to sell on Amazon and what do you sell exclusively on your website? My only recommendation would be, don't try to do both of these at the same time. Both of these in the same time that don't try to sell everything on Amazon uh, because that way they'll be able to figure out, I think very, very quickly as to what is profitable and what is not as profitable for their business and your business as well. And we have seen time and again multiple instances that for the most profitable products, there may be there may be a possibility, which is a risk essentially, that Amazon may decide to come up with their own private label brand as well. So I think we have to sort of maintain a very cautionary balance between both of these strategies. Moving on to the next slide, let me uh, share with you some of the very specific part, which uh, some of you may have heard. Manish Mohan, our head of paid media, joined last. Uh, last week. So when I asked Manish as to what are some of the things that you would recommend to a brand, the first thing is, I mean, he sort of gave me an entire list. The first one was identifying your gateway products that help bring in your custom, new customers. So are there certain products which bring in new customers, add to the Amazon at the same price? Probably you will get an additional, a new flow of revenue because you're not really going to get those new customers probably directly on your website. So the new customer should be definitely a consideration. The second is grouping low margin products that are effective in cross selling and bringing back existing customers. So there are certain low margin products that you really want to group together, right? And then you sort of cross sell and then which sort of helps in bringing existing customers. You don't really need to sell these on Amazon. Primarily because after the commission that you are paying to them, you probably will not be able to make any money out of it. The third one is identifying the high margin product with low competition and sell at discounted price on Amazon. Uh, this is what I just mentioned in the ROI grid. Again, there are two schools of thought I have out here as well. One school of thought essentially emphasizes that we should not be selling on Amazon. The other school of thought is selling on Amazon as well. So Manish is of the school that you should be selling on Amazon at a discounted price. I, on the other hand, 
a slightly different school where I believe that you should not really be selling on Amazon just because other than the competition part, there is a possibility that all this information will be noticed by Amazon anyway. The next part is using Amazon to make clear non-seasonal or discontinued stock. This is a strategy which a lot of our businesses or a lot of our clients are actually doing. Amazon is a tremendous way to really, uh, really quickly increase the velocity of all the sales from your website. And a lot of our businesses that we work with uh, in the US, they are using Amazon to clear a lot of non-seasonal or discounted stock as well. It just, just goes, flies very quickly as well. So that is something which I would definitely, definitely uh, completely support what Manish is mentioning and should be a part of your strategy. The last one is interesting. If you have any oversized heavy items, maintain selective presence of Amazon after factoring in the shipping costs. So that's going to be a more of a business decision, I think, in terms of cost of goods sold, et cetera, should be included in the entire part plus the shipping costs, et cetera. And that's where I think that would be, again, a business decision as well. So as you can see, a lot of these recommendations are fairly as to dependent on as to what you want as a business. I'll just end this last part is if you are a reseller, what you should be doing. So items that are drop shipped may need to be excluded from Amazon if you cannot guarantee first cost shipping. And that is something that we are seeing again, time and again. Uh, the second one is compare and contrast your top brands on the website and their presence on Amazon from other sellers as well. Include the brands and products where competition is low or moderate, or you have a significant room on the pricing front. So that's, again, a bit of the strategic move in terms of the products. Identifying the gateway products that we have discussed earlier, sort of bring in new customers. Group low margin products that we have discussed earlier as well. Identify high margin products with low competition. Again, as I mentioned, I have a slightly different point of view on this one. And use Amazon to clear non-seasonal, like we have discussed this, and the last part also as well. So that's what I had. So as you can see, each one of the things, I mean, what we have would definitely formulate or request all of you to do or advise all of you to do is formulate a, first of all, a holistic strategy, right? And in the strategy, Amazon should be a tactic. The first part, I can't really emphasize it anymore. The second part, which I would really want to focus is the importance of building a brand. The third component is constantly keep a tab on the competition. And I'll sort of just pass on to Nicole with a very interesting anecdote, which I can probably share uh, regarding Amazon is we see that you may get into Amazon just because the competitive intensity is less. But we have been amazed to find that from month four or month three or month four, from somewhere, more competition really automatically comes in in terms of more sellers as well. So you really have to constantly, constantly sort of maintain a balance and continuously try to sort of build your brand around some, some around your core brand purpose. So with that, I know, we have pretty much sort of got to the end of the time, but uh, any any other questions, Nicole, that I can handle maybe in the next four or five minutes, we can probably get into that. Step. Oh, yes, absolutely. There's always questions, <laughs> right? I mean, this is a really important topic. Um, we go back to the whole conversation of strategy versus tactic. And I think one of the, the things that Amazon Marketplace does is they make it very easy for a business to yeah. just have uh, all of these accessibility components at one click. For instance, customer service uh, is an example. Um, and when their business starts to perhaps boom, when a business starts to boom and, and, and become more successful in the Amazon Marketplace, uh, what kind of what happens when a tactic becomes strategy when it becomes a majority share in the business revenue beautiful question so if you really look at it the core uh, the, the core advantage which nicole amazon provides you is as you mentioned they reduce the friction tremendously the buying friction is removed uh, almost removed in the entire process as much as possible uh, we have seen time and again in many cases uh, businesses are very tempted to move from tactic to strategy. And as I think I answered one of the questions, that's, that's a, a pretty fair game if that's what you really want. But for businesses where uh, you still want to maintain and preserve your independence and really want your website to be the, the number one focus, uh, I think it creates a bit of a problem. When it moves into a strategy, your dependence level on Amazon goes quite up. And you're constantly trying to play within within their ecosystem and within their rules or play by their rules as well. 
that itself becomes a bit of a bit of a struggle for specifically businesses which really have an rather independent streak or an independent approach to the entire thing the second part which also becomes a little little difficult uh, also is when you sort of get in slowly your brand your own brand value just sort of diminishes quite substantially because people are buying from amazon they are not buying from your website right or they are not buying from your brand and honestly speaking i mean your brand uh, does not really have too much of a visibility there it basically amazon so that is something which is there what you get in return is a lot of cash right? people are getting this, this completely uh, additional sort of uh, uh, pipeline almost like a, uh, a money pipeline amount of money it also gives you a tremendous amount of exposure to the global markets the connected markets as well so that is the reason i think uh, it, it's a, it's a fair fine balance between as to what really you really want to do in the long term uh, the recommendation that i can probably have will sort of move into a strategy at this point in time and that means there is tremendous amount of dependence that you have on uh, uh, your partnership with amazon at that point in time you probably have already made a conscious choice that as one of the questions I, that i was asked is there is nothing wrong with that there is a very conscious choice that that's the way that you want to do and then a lot of very successful businesses which have built a business entirely on amazon marketplace right uh, because they are not really as much as much obsessed in terms of building their own brand uh, they are not really as much obsessed in terms of maintaining their independence uh they are probably not as much obsessed in terms of the the possibility that there may be a competitor because they are very nimble in terms of how to sort of go about innovation and they feel that they will be able to deal with competition just by through innovation and being this rapid innovation mode as well so those are my my sort of thoughts nicole yeah yeah great we have a question from the audience uh, one more question sure. if it's possible yeah, absolutely. Uh, how absolutely. can one how can one counter the lack of control that comes with selling on the marketplace for example no personalization no real control on user experience inability to establish loyal customers etc i think overall the brand store gives you an gives you an opportunity on amazon to maintain your own identity right so i think the brand store is definitely a a good option which is highly recommended but having said that there is i mean if you really look at it the i mean again the classic the four p's of marketing at the end of it the product has to be in that case differentiated enough right you are essentially comparing competing entirely on the uh, on how differentiated your product is and how innovative your product is so the the, the overall product innovation becomes a tremendously important component uh, in this new situation as well any any other questions nicole i know we have sort of gotten probably exceeded the time yet again what yeah we're a little bit over but uh yeah i mean we we could maybe roll it over to next time or yeah <laughs> or we can ask it if you if you think we have time yeah i i see i mean why don't we just have that one last question nicole and uh, maybe we can sort of wrap up after that this is such an engaged audience this is uh, this is just a privilege to really answer the questions even though we have exceeded our time limit so i hope everyone uh, everyone is okay with that so sure please go for it oh okay uh great so um another question is uh, will the secondary layer of brand packaging inside the amazon packages overcome brand loss that's a beautiful that's a that, that that that's a that's a beautiful question uh there has not been any research done so i i would have preferred to answer this purely from research perspective your inside packaging is an important component i'll give you an example uh, on this one this is a beautiful question something to thought think about and probably i think that that is one of the ways that you can really differentiate also uh so i am a i am a massive tea fan right so again uh, uh, i uh, uh, there, there is a certain type of tea which we we literally are addicted to this tea and uh i sometimes sort of buy on amazon marketplace uh, these products and they come in filled the amazon box nicole but inside their packaging is very differentiated they talk about within that the, the entire the, the lovely packaging that they have which very clearly communicates the brand they are able to really put a little bit of the why about the brand as well and i keep on so this is a very important one why about the brand is maybe a legacy talks about the brand purpose why did they even really start the brand what is the what is the history of the brand etc etc and 
that really has gotten me to remember this one particular brand and what is their overall roots and legacy, which really has helped still. I remember the name, even though I am purchasing from Amazon. So because the brand has taken an effort to really differentiate through very smart, intuitive, and very authentic packaging that I still remember the name of the brand as such. So again, a great question. Absolutely, it is, absolutely it is possible. Uh, the only question that I would have is uh, how long-term sustainable is it? Because as I was sort of getting addicted to this particular brand of tea, there comes this next brand on Amazon as well, which does it equally well. And then they have a different story. They have a very clear classic startup story. And I am perpetually obsessed with sort of really helping the small businesses and startups. So I now really have to make a choice which story is more important for me. But then when I think of it and in the overall holistic scheme of things, don't we all have to make choices even though we may be sort of uh, purchasing from any brand anywhere? So from that perspective, I think that was a great question. Yes, you can differentiate by being authentic, talking about your brand and really building that brand. And then you can obviously follow up essentially in terms of the user reviews and so on. Uh, etc and request for reviews and so on which really helps so connecting all the dots uh, but then you should be mindful of the competition as well because they may have a story which is more powerful than yours as well mm. would you recommend a dual strategy approach for an established brand You're selling uh, on your website selling on amazon always together i think there always has to be a dual approach the only question is as to what product should you be selling only on your website and what should you be selling on your brand so i think we have seen very clear cases of linkages where there are a tremendous amount of brand building can be actually done on Amazon, exactly in the packaging part that you mentioned about. Uh, effectively, if you are able to really take it further and really look into Amazon again as a tactic, right? So you have an overall scheme of things. You really want to have this much amount of e-commerce growth or e-commerce revenue within a certain amount of time, right? In that, Amazon is a tactic. This is what you really want from Amazon. You want obviously more sales, uh, you want profitable sales, but at the same time, you really want to uh, do a wide range of things in terms of selling, as I mentioned, uh, certain product types uh, and so on. But also, is there a way for you to look at Amazon in terms of through other areas like packaging as was mentioned, or through other areas probably in terms of, can Amazon be a great research, research engine as well? So those are the things which I think it's, it's definitely possible, but yeah, a dual strategy is always recommended. You can't really ignore Amazon marketing, but at the same time, your website is the number one priority, at least in my world. Again, there are some other companies at the first question, which was asked, obviously you can really build a brand on Amazon. You don't really care as much about the website. It's purely, purely a choice for you to make. Uh, I know we have run substantially uh, uh, more than the time, Nicole, but thank you very much. This has been absolutely lovely. And uh, I really wanted to offer this Thank to uh, our listeners today. You can download our five best practices, which Manish shared last webinar, just on this, our knowledge library. This is the link. Uh, we'll also share the presentation with all of you. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach back to us directly. And uh, any questions about Inflexa Digital Marketing Solutions, feel free to sort of reach out to my head of Nordics, Jaidi, as well as uh, our dear friend, Ida, who is sort of helping us with all the client services and the and the business development work. So uh, with that, we really wanted to thank all of you for joining again today. I hope it was helpful and relevant. Really looking forward to, again, having you uh, next week, which would be the, the final in our three-set series of uh, the Amazon webinars. And we'll be focusing very specifically on uh, how can you really get your brand to go international uh, using the Amazon marketplace. So thank you very much. Have a, have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nico.